here. You get Mr. Mosley and the Pet Stripe guys in a little bit. It'd be great. So we've been recruiting. Got some kids on campus. Basically had the same routine uh, this week as we had a week ago. Like an off day, a lifting day with some skill work on their own. The coaches were out. So our graduate coaches were helping a little bit. But didn't really practice uh, Wednesday, light work or yoga. Same on Thursday lifting. Friday yesterday we had a, a really good starter practice, had a good half pad practice with a full pad tomorrow. And then next week for us is finals. I might be wrong, but if my intel tells me correct, I think Duke's finals ended yesterday, so they'll actually have two weeks of no school. We'll actually be fighting through the finals and academics, and you can't just practice and meet. I mean, those are critical days, so uh, we'll keep getting some work. Uh, we'll try to have some really good work next weekend. Our plan is to travel up there on Monday, which is actually Monday of game week because the game's on Saturday. And uh, I was excited. We are up there for an event, tied it into the press conference that we had. Um, um, it's very, very impressive. We're just sort of thinking about the tradition of the organization and the Yankees and the stadium. So it will be a great experience. I think we're playing a really, really good team. I've really started looking at, at them, haven't done anything yet, game planning, uh, just working fundamentals, but very impressed. Well, I see watching Duke's team, All-American linebacker, it's the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, uh, the quarterbacks, Outstanding player, Coach Cutcliffe's great with offensive game planning. I think they were six and one at one point and lost four straight. I think they were rated in the top 25 at one point, and so it's going to be a good challenge. They've been their fourth bowl game in a row. Our first one is going to be a great challenge. Questions? For the group that's obviously never been doing this before, has it been maybe not difficult for you guys? Come to play in with all the time off between the August and the trigger game and then the bowl game? Well, we're talking about it and, and trying to go through some things like yesterday with the coaches not being here. It's just me and the GAs, but we did some unusual kicking things like long field goals with returns or, you know, surprise onsides or just some, just kind of keep them thinking football 101. We've tried to do a lot of young guy development. And some of our old guys are saying they feel as good as they felt since the start of the season. Uh, so we've lifted, tried to recover. Uh, those guys will, will go out the rust off this week. And we're kind of working in pods. We had we basically lifted three days with the young guys after the first game. We went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this week we kind of lifted again three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll give our guys uh, Monday off. We'll kind of we'll wear exam calendar falls Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We can have some, some quality work without, I think, stressing out the, the, the academic side. We'll get them Friday off. We'll go Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning and travel. So we're kind of working like in little pods. And hopefully we can kind of stay fresh, sharp, not over-practice, get some young guys developed, but then also get a good game plan in. We want to get to New York, I think, with the, the city and the travel and the bright lights. We just got to make sure that we're working in, a, in the proper way there, not leading to a, a lot of stress, travel, meeting time. you got too much on your plate. So, uh, but again, we're, we're just talking about continuing to get better in the process. Nate Suff has looked as sharp the last couple days as he had all year. Just you know, guys like that playing their best football keep getting better. So we're just trying to stay within the means of how we operate. Have a good trip, and we're going to have a lot of fun things up there to do, but we're not on vacation when it's time to work, work, and you really just want to show up. It's a great opportunity, 3.30 ABC. Saturday after Christmas is going to be it's kind of cool to time to keep branding and growing the program, and more guys want to just take advantage of the opportunity. I guess how much have you seen in terms of you talked about wanting to use some of this time, to, I guess, to regenerate some guys, guys that played a lot, maybe particularly young guys. Have you seen them kind of, some of the rest or, or whatever you want to say has kind of gotten them back a little bit sharper? Well, you ask them and they, and they say so. Now, the thing to me that was encouraging is the way we continued throughout the season to play hard. I think we had a practice routine in a game routine where we could keep coming back the next week with the same amount of the energy and effort. So. Uh, I think it was really just a chance to catch your breath, you know, uh, uh, whether, in a, whether it be psychologically, psychological or you know, physiological, feeling better mentally or physically, whatever. But, uh, they, again, good balance of practice today, very, very sharp. Young guys getting worked in, even old guys. I mean, it's, uh, I, can, I can continue to be impressed with the way these guys prepare and, and the way they kind of just play together and play for each other and the way they practice. They look good, but I don't know. And they say so. And sometimes guys will tell me what they think I want to hear versus truth. I mean, they seem good. And I guess we're giving a little bit of a to ask just Jordan. Is there any progress there? Is yeah, he was doing a little bit more practice. They run around dressing. So, again, we'll be smart, bring it back. We'll see. I mean, still, what, two weeks from the day out? 
you know, and I, and I saw you guys, somebody put, put out these declaring for the draft. Our guys go through the process because anyone declaring now is losing money because it's an immature decision. And we teach our guys on the process of getting evaled and going through and, and, and making a mature decision to, for example, if, if our guys want to move on, playing their best football this game will help them move on more than who their agent is, what they're doing in the spring. And, you know, it's, you know, it's showing that, hey, I continue to get better. You can count on me. I come to work. I'm a good practice player. I'm a good teammate. I do my job. So he's going through that process, but a couple guys are. And everybody kind of, you know, guys kind of check, check where they're at. Bottom line, I think the team's growing, and he looks like he's okay. But, you know, we'll see. I know he wants to. Um, but I think we judge that we, as we get game time, short-term and long-term. It's not about this game. It's short-term but long-term. What's best for him? What would it mean to get the All-American honors for uh, Spr Spriggs and Feeney as we get this? Uh... Well, it's, it's good. I mean, I think that shows that I think some people are watching. Because, you know, sometimes linemen only make it based on the team or namesake. You can go to certain places, always get certain guys on certain teams, because what if you don't know, you know, it's, you, know you really don't study linemen, so who sticks out? So I think it just shows that our team's doing well enough and, and growing on this, and people got some respect for them. Those are two really, really good players. I'm, I'm confident, and I think there's actually some more good things coming for them. And, but really, the best thing will be two good weeks and playing good, and then as they move in and, 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 and the, and the, you know, the next year, as they keep moving so well. But it was it was good. I mean, it's three All Americans in two years. It's only one first team All American. Those guys were second team, so it's been a while. And, and again, I think we got some more good players coming. So I think it's just time we are recruiting the right kind of bodies. You guys guys get all amped up with commitments, and in our opinion, is we can't get quality commitments early. We take our time and evaluate, get the right bodies, the right body type, uh, the right kid or buy in, and come and be developed. And those are two kids that we that started very very good. A true story to Jason Springs. Is he was a 266-pound starting left tackle as a freshman who played tight. It was a basketball kid, six foot six. You play in the end, you grow up in the end more than the end. You're a basketball guy, and he's when he kind of grew into a tight end, became a DN. And you're looking at this kid like you're probably going to be an offensive lineman. Part of the camp, a couple of you guys were at that camp, looked good. Hey, there's no doubt. He comes in day one, and we weren't very good at the time up front. And hey, you're the starting left tackle. And we're playing Indiana State that year, and they had a decent uh, senior that was a free agent type kid that got looked at a little bit. I remember even on Friday for the first game, and I go, four years from now when you're playing the NFL, you're going to go back and, re and remember how bad you were crapping your pants before you played this first game. <laughs> and now you're playing against a real, a real dude, a real guy. <laughs> and so uh, that, was, that was the Friday of, of sitting at, at lunch, just having a conversation, saying, hey, relax now. You're going to be pretty good. You'll be all right. So he started good. He's been a great player. Dan Pee the same way. Jason's got a lot of athleticism. <laughs> Dan's just got a lot of continuity and consistency, and they're, they're in great process. Uh, you know, I know that line position pretty well. A lot of people would say the hardest position to coach is the position that the head coach. You know, I played the position, I coached the position. Greg does an awesome job. I don't, even, I don't walk into his wheelhouse. He coaches them up, and I mess up everybody else. He does a great, great job. And what you that's a credit to Greg Fry, the finalist for the Bulls, I mean, a nominee for Bulls. And what you've seen of you, do they remind you of anyone you played this year? Uh, very much offensively. I don't think they're quite as dynamic receiver-wise as um, Michigan State, but their system and style, the way the quarterback plays, has got a little bit of that. And David's going to do a good job of putting them in good place. The quarterback can run around a little bit and very, very in, 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 in impressed offensively. Defensively, you know, like so many teams we play, very comparable to Wake Forest, who's one of the better defenses in the, in, in the ACC. I think they're about fifth or sixth or seventh the most defensive stats. They're a four, three quarters team, make it hard to run. Uh, you know, some young skilled guys, they have, they have played so well. And Duke can nationally attract a lot of academic top-notch kids that they target that they've just enhanced, I think like we have, they've enhanced their skill. So you watch their defense and they're active flying around and can just cut Coach Cutcliffe's background. His quarterback plays very, very well. He's an athletic guy and they're going to cause a lot of fits offensively. Hadn't got in much of their kicking, although they think their kick return for, uh, players Kind of an All-American, All-Conference kid, had three touchdown returns. So um, in four bowl games in a row, last year or two years ago, they played for the ACC championship, you know, won their division. So uh, the team is doing this year, they're 6-1 and one and 22 or 19 or something in the country and and, uh, and just had a little run, kind of cuts where they, where they got on the wrong side of the score. This is a time where you kind of see a lot of coaching movement going around across the country. I mean, what's, is there any, what's the status of your staff right now? Is it all still together? 
Yeah, they were a bit low income. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the recruits right now. I mean, you know, that's, 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 that's part of college ball, though. So, again, hopefully, again, we've talked. We're trying to maintain continuity. And, again, I think we've battled. And there's some guys who've been approached before. And, and uh, again, I've just got a lot of appreciation for our guys and, and uh, the way they, they've done a solid job of recruiting. And, uh, and, you know, you talk about some great coaches, Coach Hill, the strength staff, and the way they've developed the Phoenix and Sprigs and, and those type of players is, is awesome. So, I mean, it's a great group of guys. And uh, uh, right now, we're, our plans will be, but, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, uh, offers do come. And there's lots of things to consider between families and educations and kids. And, you know, it's not about, you know, dollars all the time. You just want to be at a place where you can win. You're having fun. So, like, I think the best thing we have going is, is I think our coaches believe in our kids. Uh, I think they like it. I think they like each other. And I just think they like working together. And that's, a, that's, that's, I think, one of the reasons why our teams stay pretty, pretty together. I think our coaches are uh, very close and pretty much together. I know a lot of the I know the offensive line probably deserves a lot of the credit for the running game this year, but I guess just looking at Divine specifically, how how do you think he's gotten better since the beginning of the year? Is he maybe more relaxed or just maybe more? Yeah, good more question. And I would compliment too now the games that we really played well in the tight end group has been, you know, when Danny Frank got hurt and and Casaro had a banged up shoulder ankle thing he was fighting through, and we just had Mike Cooper. There's a couple games where we weren't as good running the ball in that tight end group, you know. You know, Michael playing better, played really great down the stretch. Kiwi honored last night. Uh, Brandon Knight moving out there, solidified. So that when you say to me, offensive line, you got to include that, include sure. that tight end group, especially because we're a spread team and the quarterback's not a true run threat. So to capture the edge or, or cut off the backside, you got to have that defensive or that tight end position. I think wanted to get credit to Coach McCullough and the way he develops players. Uh, Divine more plays, more confident. You know, to me, I would always complain early in the game, it's just give them what we block. You know, if, you know, if we block it for three, it gets three. But sometimes, you know, you, you know, a really good back just gets you four and five when it's three. It just kind of stay, keeps you ahead of the chains. And I just think the more he's played, trust him more, he presses it more. Uh, he's not second guessing, he's calmer. And I think as, as, quote, he's played more and he's gotten calmer, then he's gotten faster. And so, but uh, credit to him, he's, he's, he was hands down the leader of the running back crowd as we transitioned from Tevin into Jordan. He's always been the leader of that group. He's a great worker. Uh, he's doing well in so many facets, and then the play the way he did down the stretch, line play, tight end play was good. Uh, but the, you know he's coming along, and as always, I think you got to credit Coach McCullough. You mentioned a couple months ago that, that Camion was working in the backfield for you guys. Is, is he still kind of giving you? Yeah, a we just you know we, we we put him in Ohio State. So I said, hey, come be Braxton, and he was really good. And then he said, why don't we do this? And I said, well, you can't play right yet, you know, because he's pretty good. And then we should start playing some at tailback because we, we have with the injuries some of our, you know, uh, Andrew Wilson and, and Alex Rodriguez who are kind of some of our backup tailbacks are playing. Well, now we kind of need you for Saturday. And so we, he just by necessity. And so he's very natural at it. He's very good with the ball in his hand. He's still playing receiver today. He played both. I said, come here. Play some, you know, two plays here. And we're doing some young guy. Hey, go outside. So, uh, you know, he'll be okay. Have you guys noticed these two weeks been on the road after getting the ball, but have you noticed uh, maybe the way recruits have kind of received you or is it Yeah, I think again good. I mean we got a lot of air time. You just you know, I can't tell you, you know, walking in the hallways of buildings and just seeing you play, man, you look good, you got to play hard and the exciting games, so you're close, you get tired in that close field a little bit other than that. But uh, we're fortunate with some of the ABC time that we got and some of the performances a credit to the kids. Uh, once they get up here they see a great school and the academics and the facilities, that's always good. I think you can tell because you follow it. I mean you look at where they're visiting. I mean, we got guys on campus right now that are actually locked in supposedly to other places. I don't know who's locked in anymore. I don't know who <coughs> coaches where right now. I mean, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot of liquidity uh, between now and matter of fact, I don't think recruiting's going to start, like I said, until January 15th. And then it'll be, a, it'll be wide open for a couple weeks of all the coaching changes and all the he said, she said stories. Like I tell recruits all the time, you need to recruit with two things, and that's your eyes and that's your heart or gut. Don't recruit with your ears because you're going to hear a lot of stuff. You know, you know, trust what you see and trust what you feel and sense. But we'll keep working hard. We've got a number of quality kids here, a number of guys moving forward, potentially here at junior college signing date next week. Uh, and I'll let you know this, if, if that happens and a kid's a mid-year kid, we can actually have him here next Saturday, Sunday, Monday, any of those guys practicing. But they cannot go to the bowl site. So there's a chance that if we are fortunate enough to land a mid-year kid by rule, can actually get those guys on campus a couple days, and that's better because if when he come in January, I can work with the kid, but I can't have a ball in his hand. You know, so right, you know, he can't catch a ball, he can't kick a ball. 
but um, uh, but if they're here these couple three days, I think that would be kind of neat and escalate our process of these are things you need to work on as, as January comes back. So we'll see. Nothing's ever set in stone. So you see it when you believe it. The faxes come in, they show up, and they're eligible and all that stuff. Is it, is it JUCOs and high school? Any, any I guess anybody who's mid year enrolling? Mid year enrolling. And for us this year, we only have two open spots. You can only replace, even if a guy says, hey, I'm leaving, or a guy, a guy starts, starts and quits the team, he's on scholarship the whole year. So even though he's not here, that scholarship's going. The only time we can replace someone mid year is that we did not use the scholarship. And we typically use all our scholarships to like to reward those walk-ons um, for what that's worth. So I, I, I invest money in those guys. I think those are some of like our late, late, late uh, recruits. You know, I'd rather every time we look at somebody late, he better be better than so and so. Because I, you know, like like last year, like he better be better than Mitchell Page, or hey, that's Griffin Oak scholarship. So if you want him, that's that's Griff's money, and you go with that. So, um, um, but the high school guys, because this year only two guys we can replace are Sudfeld graduates and Eric Tove. And, and the reason why is we're playing so many true freshmen that the, the seniors are not in their ninth semester, they're in their seventh semester. It's like Nate's graduating in three and a half years. And so that's why it's hard to have, quote, more mid year spaces. And we can hold money back, but I like rewarding more. Kevin, you're uh, a little banged up in the, in the secondary. Are you getting healthy there? Yeah, they're, you know, those guys are back going down. You know, the foot guys, you know, are, are out because. Those guys had a couple of procedures with uh, Dutra and, and Jamil, but uh, one Crawford looks more healthy than he's been. Andre Brown's back on, and of course uh, Leon Thornton. We did a competition day, and I wondered we were wide receiver against a DB, and Thornton jumped up the line. I said, oh, "Which one are you playing?" <laughs> you know, and he said, "I'm a DB." So, um, um, yeah, we're, we're a little, we're, we're, you know, Marcus Oliver quote says, "Best I felt since the start of preseason." I don't know. You know, so we're getting a little bit, we're, we're better. We, we need to practice hard, but we've got to practice smart because you want to get a little nick up between now in two weeks. We want, we want to show up and be a good team. So playing a great team in a great stadium. Johnny can tell you, he took me out the other day to, on the field walk and we walked, to, um, walked and we're just looking around. Hey, what's our sideline? Where's the locker room? You know, checking the grass, you're feeling the wind. We're doing you know, those little senses you try to get a feel for. And he said, turn around and we're about a, what, 15, 17 yard line. He goes, you're standing in center field. He can tell you, started sweating. I, was, I thought I was Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and then and I said, hey, I'm Mitchell Page catching a punt. I'm looking right back at home plate. It was great. It was pretty cool. Great environment. So, yeah, we'll get those guys back, and this bowl game's going to be a great trip, but we want to play our best against a good team. Anything else? Hey, Coach, uh, other than the season opener, you didn't get <coughs> a chance to prepare for one opponent like you do a bowl game. Uh, are there any consequences to that, or is, do you view it only as a positive to have this extra time? I think from a player development point, um, and I think from a physical recovery point, I think sometimes those coaches, oh, we can do too much. And we can game plan. Like I always say, we're playing a legitimate team, and you're putting it together in two days, three days. Well, now you got three weeks, and us coaches can be smart enough to screw things up when it helps sometimes because you quote over coach. So, you know, you want to look at your tendencies. You want to be smart. We really just want to keep getting better, stay with the process. You know, you got you to you go you know, dance with the one you took, so you kind of are what you are. Uh, we still got some things we're trying to work on and clean up defensively, offensively. Um, but I'm concerned about over preparation. And, and I'm concerned of, of, of overcoaching, but I also know we're a team that's sitting in 6-6 six and six needs to get better, and there's a balance that I'm working on and, and how we do it. I, I, we put a lot of thought, but I think we're still working through our schedule of how to do it to max it out without overdoing it. Good? All right, guys. Great one.